Hey everybody, how are you doing this morning? Oh, what an amazing uh, day we had yesterday in the house of the Lord. I just want to personally thank uh, Pastor Smithy for uh, just an amazing word from the Lord. Um, and uh, I hope it challenged you. I hope it caused you to, to refocus and maybe start looking through life or begin the process of looking through life in a different lens. Um, and uh, and it just it just an amazing uh, time, and the, the the spirit of the Lord was was there um, in communion. I hope that through communion you experience some healing, um, that you begin to realize that as we take uh, in that that remembrance of what He's done and really focus on that, that we can experience healing as we take communion, um, because by His stripes and by His body broken we are healed. And it's amazing that we can come to him with, uh, no matter how much we have uh, sinned, if you will, or just walked away from him, that he is always uh, calling us back in his blood. The forgiveness of sin is such an amazing thing. Um, just should, should bring you just some excitement. I hope you're anticipating good things this week. Um, so, uh, Isaiah 55 um, is where I'm at this morning. And, um, and I'm just going to encourage you to really study out the whole thing um, because I think it kind of goes in with this, where we've been sitting uh, this last weekend. Um, uh, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call to him while he is near. Uh, this is in Isaiah 55, starting in verse 6. So seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. This does not necessarily mean that the Lord is not going to be found or um, is not ever near. But what it's calling us to do, right, is it's calling us to, um, in the situations of our lives, um, that we need to remember that he is near, that he can be found, and that we can go to him and we can gain our strength, our joy, our anticipation, the way we see, the, the lens that we see through things. Um, we can get that from him, um, and, and that's where we need to look, okay? And I'm going to be skipping around a little bit today. Um, so that's verse 6. Verse 7 talks about... Uh, let the wicked abandon his ways and the sinful ones his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord um, so that he, the Lord, may have compassion on him to our God and he freely forgives. So again, this is about um, seeking the Lord in that situation, giving him the situation, letting him have it, letting us back away from it in our own thinking and our own um, understanding. Um, yeah, let the wicked abandon his ways. I, I, I keep thinking of James when it says uh, those evil desires that are within us when they grow and they begin to grab us and they take root. And then that causes us to, to walk in sin and then that eventually leads to death. And this is what, you know, let because we can go to him in the situation, we don't have to follow that path. We can actually return to the Lord, right? And he will freely give. He gives his love, his grace, his mercy. He freely gives those things. He says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts and your ways are not my ways. This is the Lord's declaration. For as heaven is higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And and, and that's something that we need to remember is that that when he begins to speak into us and he's asking us to do things and he's asking us to walk, that we have a tendency sometimes to second guess those things. But what we need to do is remember that his ways are higher. Um, it, 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 Jesus taught us to forgive our enemies or to be kind to those who persecute us and bless those. It seems completely backwards, upside down, right? It, uh, than, than what it does. But as we do that, um, we follow his ways. There's a purpose for that. It says in... Um, Verse 10, for just as the rain and snow fall from heaven and do not return without saturating the earth and making it germinate and sprout and providing seed to sow and food to eat, so my word that comes from my mouth will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish what I please, what God pleases, and will prosper in what I send it to do. So many times we think that it's our idea and our thing and we, we try to even in good things, guys, we, we 
we plow ahead, even in ministry, we plow ahead. We think it's what, because we're, we're thinking with not his thoughts, but with our thoughts. Have you ever been there? And then it doesn't seem to go. I mean, God may use it and he may grow it, but sometimes it just seems like it doesn't go. Well, that's because um, we're not understanding that his ways, if we would do it his way. And that's why I said in the everyday may, uh, mundane things of life, that we invite his presence into that situation because because his ways are higher and he may give you a, a way to do something that, that you've never thought about. Um, Pastor Smithy talked about forgiveness being the key uh, to a lot of things and I think that so many of us wanna move past without the forgiveness and then we wonder why things don't work out the way we want. When, when his ways is saying, no, go back to this thing, forgive in your heart and then now we can move forward. And, and I need to tell you this, and you need to remember this, that when the Lord speaks into your life, when he shows you scripture, when he gives you prophetic promises, when he sends someone with a word for you, you need to understand that these things that the Lord, his word, it says right here, that comes from his mouth will not return empty. In other words, it will do what it's supposed to do and it'll be glorious because it's through his ways and his thoughts um, and, 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 and we need to rely on that. Uh, a lot of people think, well, when you, when you do this, this, you know, when you follow Jesus, it's a crutch. Um, but I don't believe it is. I believe it's, it's, it's the surrendering of our will to his will is a, is a um, power surge in understanding and walking in him. Um, this is so important. Um, I just, I think there's someone out there today who just believes that the Lord hasn't fulfilled what he said. And I'm just here to tell you that he has fulfilled it. It is finished. He said, it is done. He has spoken into existence. Therefore, what needs to happen is you need to just trust in his timing, trust in his understanding, um, because it's higher than ours, right? Um, and, and when we do this, this is, a, this is another prophetic promise. When we do this, when we walk in this and we understand his ways, or maybe not understand his ways, but we trust, there's the word, we trust and wait in his ways, okay, and his thoughts, then there is a prophetic promise. And it says this, you will indeed go out with joy and be peacefully guided. You will go out with joy and you will be peacefully guided. In other words, that's to me, we, I talked about the double-minded. That means that's living life without that double mind that's, that, or that double heart. It is, it is that, it's that I'm thinking, letting God design the, the way, letting God uh, show me the path, letting his word light up what's in front of me, um, his ways. So I'm going to follow him. I'm going to take his presence and his guidance as a free gift. And I'm going to walk through this and I'm going to go out with joy and I'm going to be guided by peace. And, um, and it, then it's even this says, it says, and then all this will break out. It says the mountains and the hills will break into singing before you. In other words, in other words, before you, he lays a path of praise and worship and thanksgiving. Um, and then it says, and all the trees will fields will clap their hands. And then it talks about transformation. When Jesus lives in us, instead of a thorn bush, a cypress tree, instead of a briar, a myrtle, um, and it will make a way, a name for Yahweh and an everlasting sign that it will not be destroyed. He's talking about what God is doing in your life. He's going to transform those things that are, that have been thorns and briars and stuff that just is irritating and it hurts and the past things and the future worry and the anxiety and all these things. He wants to transform those into a, a name for Yahweh, a name for, for him. And then it will be an everlasting sign for you that the enemy cannot destroy you. You have one. His ways are higher than yours. His thoughts are higher than yours. Settle in on those. Allow his presence to just drench you as we walk forward today. Jesus, anoint us again for this. Thank you for this weekend. Give us wisdom as we go forward. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hey, guys, I sent out a flock note, a very important flock note. Make sure that you look at it. It'll come to you about 2 o'clock today. Um, and make sure you look at that. It's about the reopening. It's some giving. Uh, just I need some answers from you. Uh, so there's, there's three poll questions. Make sure you see those. Guys, I love you to pieces, and we will talk to you tomorrow morning. God bless you.